Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. It's great to see you guys all here um, to learn about managing finances during tough times. I do, again, want to welcome you very much. My name is Colleen Garrity, and I am going to be your presenter today. Um, I have a lot to cover today, so just to let you know, um, a lot of great information. Um, now, I've been in the finance field for over 30 years, and I have worked for Balance, who is who I work for, uh, which is a nonprofit financial education and counseling services. And Balance has been around for over 50 years. So as a member of LAPFCU, you guys actually receive free services from us. Um, so you can get the free counseling and the free online resources, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. I'd also like to introduce from LAPFCU, Natalie Nahas, who is the business development manager at LAPFCU. Now, Natalie is going to share some exciting news later on in the presentation about LAPSCU's Referral Rewards Program, where you could make some extra cash just by referring eligible members. So stay tuned for that. Natalie, are you online? I'm here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Natalie. Welcome. Now, Thanks. also online, I'm excited to say that we have Tim Weiss, who is the manager of the Consumer Lending and Collection, and he's also going to be available to answer any questions you may have uh, related to mortgage forbearance, loan modifications, and any other questions that you may have. Tim, are you online? I am, Colleen. Good evening. Well, good evening and welcome. You've got a lot of great people here that are here to assist you and help you, so definitely um, stay tuned. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, you can go ahead and put it in the question box. We'll get to them as soon as we possibly can. At the end of the presentation, we're definitely going to do as many questions as possible, and if we don't get to your question, we will definitely email you the answer, so we're not going to leave you hanging, I promise you. We will get to as many as possible, so don't be shy. Definitely ask those questions. Now, just to let you know, we all know that right now it's been a really turbulent time. Things have been changing pretty much daily. We've been having ups. We've been having downs. We've been going in. We've been going out. Everything's been changing constantly. And with all the stuff that's changing, it's like we really don't know what's going on. But the one thing that's really kind of nerves a lot of people is the fact of our finances, our money. You know, are we going to be okay? And I'm going to tell you, yes, you are going to be okay. So if this is the first time you've ever gone through a financial situation to where you just don't know what's happening, there are steps you can take to protect yourself. I actually worked for an organization for over 25 years, almost 26 years, and I thought, oh, I'm set. Everything's good. I'm good. Then 2008 happened. And suddenly, they were closing down the department that I happened to be in, in the financial institution I was in. And I was like, what the heck is this? I don't, I don't know what to do. I didn't know what steps I was supposed to take. And it was really scary. But I got through it. Basically, I found balance. But I got through it. And it was a really great thing for me. And I found that it actually was a silver lining for me. Uh, got me out of my rut, per se. So it ended up being a, a silver lining for me. But I do got a quick question for you. I want you to raise your hand. There's a little hand icon um, by your name there. So find the, I, the hand icon. And what I'd like you to do is raise your hand if you are furloughed or you know that you're going to be furloughed in the future. So if you're going to be furloughed in the future or you are already furloughed from your job, could you please just raise your hand for me on that little hand icon? Okay, there is a couple of you. Okay, next I'd like you to raise your hand if you have had your hours cut or you're unemployed or if you've, or if you've been laid off. So if you've been laid off or unemployed, go ahead and raise your hand for me. If you could go ahead and click that hand icon. Okay, yep, there is a few of you. Well, it's all going to be okay. I promise you, it's going to be okay. So today we're going to cover a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about budgeting. We're going to talk about adjusting your savings to go along with this 
turbulent time that we're going through. Talking about some furloughs, so for some of you that are being furloughed, unemployment and some of the good news that's going on with unemployment for you to help you. And also, of course, ways you can earn money and still create and still make unemployment. So you can get unemployment and a little bit of extra cash. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about handling your debt, but more so some really important dates that you have to that would that are important for you to know about. So we're going to really go over some of those dates. Also protecting yourself from scams and savings. But what I really want you to do first, the first thing I want you to do is I want everybody to take a deep breath. I want you to close your eyes, first of all, and I want you to all take a real deep breath. Breathe in. And now I want you to breathe out slowly. Okay. It's going to be okay. You are going to find that some of the steps you're going to be taking, some of the things that you're going to be doing, it's going to be okay. I want you not to despair. In this presentation, we hope to help you learn how you can grow a brighter future for yourself. But right now, I want you to, again, just make sure you remember to breathe. Whenever things get really stressful, remember to breathe. Look at the silver lining that may be small for some of us, right? But it's still there. And try to keep a positive feeling within yourself because you are going to emerge from the dark times with really better days ahead. But the first thing you want to do, of course, is start with a plan. So when you start with a plan, you want to be prepared. You want to say, okay, what am I going to do? So by a raise of hands, how many of you actually have a budget and follow a budget? How many of you follow a budget? Okay. All right, so raise your hand if you follow a budget. Click that hand icon. A couple of you. Only a couple of you. Okay. All right. So All right. So when it comes to a budget, this is a really good time to think about a budget. To really think about a budget. Even if you are retired, um as I see on the little um comment section here, um which yes, even if you're retired, there's great news for you, too. So even if you're retired, it's always a good idea to always have a budget. So definitely you want to have a budget in place. So how do I create a budget? And I'm telling you, it doesn't take very long. I actually spend about 15 minutes every Friday looking at my budget and seeing where things need to be adjusted. So it doesn't take long. It, it takes a little bit of time when you first get started, but it really doesn't take very long at all. So the one thing you want to do is make sure you have that budget in place and also specific goals. So what kind of goals do you have? What are some of the goals, financial goals you have? In the um, comment section, in the uh, question box area, write for me what kind of goals are you have? What kind of financial goals? Is it is it to um, have build up your savings account, get rid of some debt? What are some of the goals you have? If you guys could write in the question section what kind of goals you may have. So what are some of your goals? Paying off debt, yep. Yeah, great. Lots of wonderful goals coming in here. Great, wonderful. Glad to see that. We do have some good goals going in here. So, yeah, paying off debt is really a good one. Um, not lose more deferred compensation. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, definitely. Buying a home. Okay. That's actually a nice goal. That's a really good goal if you not have one. Yeah, major finance shift with employment. Okay, we've got some really good goals going in here. These are wonderful. I'm loving these goals. Be able to afford to pay off my student loans within five years of graduation. Oh, I'm I'm pulling for you, Grant. I am definitely pulling for you. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you for those wonderful goals. You guys did great on those. Okay, so you got some great goals. And if you have a good budget, you can achieve the goal. So what, if you see it, you can believe it and achieve it. And I always believe that. That's one of my favorite sayings. So if I can see something, if I write down my goal, it's always important, write it down. Write it down, see it, believe it, and if you believe it in your heart, you will achieve it. 
But again, it starts with that budget, right? So how do you do a budget? Um, a budget is basically the foundation of financial success. It means analyzing what you have coming in, then developing a reasonable and goal-oriented plan for what is going out. Again, dedicating some time to your budget will help you pay your bills on time. It'll help you put more money in savings. It'll eliminate that debt that you go got going. Um, so what? how do you do it? Very easy. First, you want to list your current income. So how much money is coming in and where is that money coming from? So wherever it is, even if you have more than one job or one, more than one thing that you do, however that money is coming in within your household, write everything down. Get it written down. How much money do you bring home every single month? Now, you want to be a little conservative with this because if let's say you work overtime and right now if you're driving a delivery truck, you're probably doing a lot of overtime and that may not be normal. So what you want to really do is write down a conservative number. Okay, so if I have uh, uh, the average that I make is X, not exactly what I make. So you want to write down a conservative number of what you bring home because it's so much better, so much better to have extra money at the end of the month versus less money at the end of the month. So now that you know what your income is, what's coming in, next thing you want to do is what's going out. What money is going out? If you're not sure exactly where your money's going, you're going to want to track your expenses for about a month. Um, or, of course, you can look at past statements um, on your checking accounts, your savings accounts, and, of course, credit card statements in order to determine where the money's going. So take a look at it, really sit down. Now, you're probably going to spend about an hour to two hours really getting everything together the first time. So that may take a little bit longer than usual, okay? So definitely want to see exactly where your money's going. Now, once you have that um, in place and you know exactly where the money's going, that's great. Now, you don't want to forget about ATM withdrawals and credit card, what you spend your credit card on. Don't want to forget about that. That's not free cash. So make sure if you're spending it, it's part of the budget, even your credit cards, because your credit card, again, you want to pay that credit card off every month. And if it's in your budget, like, for instance, gasoline, and you use your credit card for gasoline, you can pay the credit card because you've already budgeted for that gasoline. And that way you can help yourself with that. And, of course, don't forget the debts if you happen to have credit card debt that you add that to your budget. Now, one of the other things that you want to also do is you want to track um, your periodic payments, periodic expenses such as the registration for your car, gifts, things like um, the holidays, birthday gifts, um, anniversary, maybe a wedding that's coming up that year, this year. Um, if you have a bas mitzvah or a confirmation or whatever it happens to be. So any kind of gifts that you have, you want to add up how much you want to spend on those this year. Put that down now, and when the holidays get here, you're in good shape. So you have all your periodic payments, add them all up, and then divide them by 12. And put that amount in your budget each and every month. And that way, you're putting that money into another savings account, calling it your periodic savings account. That's what I call mine. And then... When those expenses come up, you don't have to adjust your budget. So, for instance, let's say your registration for your car is $240. So, you divide that by 12. That's only $20 a month. I know my budget can handle $20 a month versus a $240 hit. So, then by having that, you can go to your periodic savings account and pay that registration without problems. So, that's how you kind of calculate those periodic um, payments. Put them in that savings account. Leave it there at LAPFCU, have it grow, have it sit there, and, and you'll find yourself in much better shape. You always want to make sure that your expenses never, ever, ever are more than what you bring in. That's the main goal that you want in your life, is that your expenses never outgrow your, um, never are more than your income. Okay, so always make sure when you're doing your budget that they either equal to your income or that it's less than your income. Now, you're going to be putting your savings, how much you're going to put in savings in that sheet too, so it should equal zero. 
by the time you're done. So any extra money, yeah, you want to put that into a regular savings account. So you can track your expenses by writing everything down. And I am sure there is an app for that, right? There's an app for everything. In fact, LATFCU um, has their money management tool, which is accessible via your um, patrol online banking and mobile app. And to track, it does what it does is it tracks spending trends. It tracks, your, it helps you manage and review budgets and savings and observe your cash flow. It's a really great program to get onto. And if you can't figure out how to get onto it, I'm sure one of the staff members at LAPSCU would help you um, get yourself started with it. Now, I'd also suggest that you also download uh, the workbook uh, money management planner which is at lapfcu.balancepro.org. It's going to be very helpful for you. And it's great for when you start out your budget, when you're first starting your budget. This is a great booklet to use. Um, what you do is you go to lapfcu.balancepro.org. If you're on your computer, it would be you go to the top um, left. If you're on your cell phone, you get the drop down. And you would click on resources and then on booklets. And then find Money Management Planner, and you'll see this great booklet that's going to have all these charts and graphs and things that you can utilize in order to write down your budget and really kind of um, control it and get it all set up and ready to go. Uh, so definitely want to take a look at that. So you can put your monthly income. As you can see, child support. It gives you kind of the, the tips on what you can do for your monthly income. And then the monthly expenses. Put what you currently spend when you find them in the current spot. And then when you see, oh, wait a minute, my money is – running out. Now I see where it's running out. Where can I cut? So where are some of the places that I can cut? Well, if you are not working, gasoline may be one of them. You may not have to drive too much anymore. Um, so you can go ahead and cut some of the gasoline out. Uh, the so when you're going into things, um, the other thing you want to do is you never want to, you want to look at the needs first. So what are the needs? Needs are things like your house, right? Your so the roof over your head, gas. Um, excuse me, uh, your electric, your garbage, your water. Those are the things that are kind of the needs. So you want to kind of look at what are the needs: electricity, water, food, roof, garbage, and sewer. And savings is the other one. So you should really put the majority of everything to those um, to those items. So as far as the percentage of the income grant that you should be putting into, it just depends on how much money uh, you actually make and how much those expenses are. Because you really want to put the least amount to leisure. Um, I always say that with savings, you should put 10% of whatever income you make should go to savings. And leisure, I always say leisure should be the same amount, 10%. You can squeak it up to 20% if your other essential things are not um are not are not costing you as much so that's that's where you want to kind of be at but definitely saving should be 10 percent so now that you do know your current expenses and you know exactly what is needed and you really look at the necessities of what you need which again is electricity water food roof garbage sewer and of course, savings, then you can look at some of the ways that maybe you can reduce some of these. So I'm just going to go over a few of these um, ideas. One of the ways that you could definitely do things now is through cable internet. Contact your cable internet company. So important to do. I called mine. And as I said, and this is something you guys can say, and this is a really good trick, okay? You call your cable and internet company and you say to them, I'm really, uh, my bill is really too high for me right now, so I'm shopping around to see if I can find a lower payment. So I was wondering, because I really like you guys, I'm, I'm wondering, do you have any specials going on right now? They bent over backwards for me, and I pay now $80 less per month, $80, mind you, less per month on my cable internet, and I have the same service. $80. And it's only going to last for a year, but believe me, in a year from now or a year from last, uh, a year from about a month ago, I'm going to call them again and say the same thing. <laughs> but 
definitely call your cable internet company because they will do whatever they can. So what they did was they said, oh, well, we have a special for new people. So we'll go ahead and give that to you for right now. Uh, but it, we can, it'll only last for a year. And I'm like, okay, sure. That sounds good to me. So definitely call them. That's so important to do. I want everybody, everyone that's listening to me in the sound of my voice, call your cable company. Uh, the next thing that you can reduce, one of the other things you can reduce is your garbage. Um, a lot of people have the big garbage can. So if you happen to live in a home and you pay for garbage, call your garbage company. Get the little bitty itsy bitsy garbage can. It really works. It also saves the environment because you're going to find yourself putting more into the recycle bin because that doesn't get littler. That doesn't go small. But your garbage can goes smaller. And you really don't need that garbage can as much as you think you do. And you're going to find yourself not wasting as much and saving money. So you're not wasting money either. So call your garbage company and lower the size of your garbage can. That's another way where you can definitely save on, on some money. And another really good way to save on money um, is to not go get coffee or fast food. Um, get the stuff from home. You'd be real surprised. So, for instance, if you go to the coffee house two times per day, and as I said, you go to the ATM machine, pull out $20, and you don't know where it went. It flew away somewhere. Yay. Well, guess what? You may have spent it on coffee, okay? Um, so if you go and get coffee two times a day and spend $6 for that coffee, well, $6 isn't that bad. I can handle $6, right? But if you go every day for two day, two times per day, 30 days a month, okay, that's $12 times 30, which comes to $360. And right now, you may need that $360. So try to avoid going to the coffee house. And I'm telling you, if you go to the, to the grocery store, they've got this great creamer, different flavors. You can make your latte exactly like you like it. And it's better for you because it has less caffeine in it because you're making it yourself because they put extra caffeine in those coffee houses. So in most of them. So definitely go ahead and look it up and go get make your own coffee and you're going to end up saving yourself money and $360 and probably $15 you'll spend for that creamer um, over the month's time and you saved yourself over $300. So definitely want to look into that. So those of you that are being furloughed or those of you that really want to put money into savings and really save up for stuff for an emergency that may happen again uh, for something that is unexpected, this is a really good way of doing it. Uh, so, for instance, in my, in my city and county, um, they are furloughing, uh, furloughing um, some of the employees. Uh, so, and they expect to do it again next year, uh, that they're going to be furloughing some of the employees in my city and county where I live. And I'm sure it's going to be happening in your area too. So if you actually um, think about it, you want to save for that money. You want to be prepared for it. It's always good to be prepared for something that may happen. Even if you're getting through this one, the next one. You want to make sure that, you know, emergencies happen all the time. Let me tell you, you cannot get through life without an emergency thing happening, with something unexpectedly happening to you, okay? So this is one way of doing it, and that is to create a savings account, which I call the furlough savings account. Now, teachers do this. My, de my brother taught this to me. He's a, he's a professor. He gets paid 10 months out of the year, and the other two months he gets no salary. So what he does is he basically does this. So you take your monthly income, what you bring home a month. Let's just say $3,000, maybe low for some, maybe high for some. But we're going to just use 3000 as my uh, pretend number. So you take your $3,000 that you receive that you actually bring home each month, and you times that by 11. So if you're trying to save up for one month, if it's, ten, if it's two months, then you would times it by 10. But I'm going to use 11 that you're going to only be furloughed for one month. So you take the 3,000, you times it by 11, which is $33,000. And then you're going to divide it by 12. So when you divide it by 12, that comes to $2,750. That's the amount you want to put in your income section of your budget is the 2750 you then now have an extra $250 from that $3,000 that you're going to be putting in your furlough savings account. That will then build up 
So if you are furloughed, you have some extra cash that you can pull out to cover that uh, payment loss, that pay loss. Now you can also calculate a daily um, reduction and make changes to your current spending um, by looking at your per day loss, your income loss each month. Now this is a little bit trickier of a calculation, but I know how intelligent you guys are. And I will tell you that, take a picture of the screen. I'm gonna send this to you after the session's over in about two hours after the session's over. So definitely this is something that is really fun and interesting to do. So if you know, hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna to have to take a furlough day or my boss is because of this COVID thing is gonna make me take three or four days off next month. I really want to be prepared for that. Well you can be. So what you would do is take your gross yearly income. And that gross yearly income is does not include um overtime. What it includes is what did your employer say you were gonna get paid on a yearly basis, the actual amount of that. So in my example, I'm gonna use $40,000. So $40,000, and I'm dividing it by 260 um, days, and that's because that's the average um, amount of days, the average work number um, of work days per year. So if I do that, the result is $154. Um, so then, Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply it by the marginal tax rate. Now the marginal tax rate you can Google. So you can Google it and see what that amount is. Uh, so $40,000 for the federal, it's 22% is the marginal tax rate. For the state of California, and I'm gonna use that as an example, most of us are in California, is 6%. So 6% plus 22% is 29%. So you're gonna take your, um, $154, and then you're going to times that by the 0.29, which is going to give me $43.13. So that's my daily net. Now I'm going to take my um, daily gross, which was that $154, subtract it from my $43.13, leaving me with $110.88 short for each furlough day that I have. So each day off that my boss tells me I have to take off, I know my paycheck is going to be $110.88 short approximately. This does not count, of course. You're going to have a little bit of Social Security, a little bit of a few other things that come out, but this is really close to where it's going to be is $110.88. So you can kind of adjust that with your budget as you go along. But the good, great news is, and this is going to be when the fun stuff happens, okay? So how many of you have applied for unemployment? Can you raise your hand if you have applied for unemployment? Anybody's applied? Okay, so we do have a few people that have applied for unemployment, okay? So the good news is, though, is if you are going to be unemployed, even if it's for one day, if your boss says you get to stay off work for one day, and we're not gonna pay you for one day a month, you can receive unemployment. That is such great news. So even one day, you're gonna get some unemployment. It's not gonna be your full paycheck, so that's why that furloughed savings account is a really good thing to have, but you will actually get paid. So the great thing is, is that due to the pandemic, um, those receiving unemployment, in the state of California are now receiving 26 weeks of regular state benefits, 26 weeks. But because of the pandemic, the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Plan, which is the PEUC, so the PEUC also kicks in, giving you an additional 13 weeks, and that came from the CARE Act that was passed, that gives you an additional 13 weeks, and that's available until the end of the year. So once again, you get 26 weeks plus the 13 weeks, a total of 39 weeks of unemployment. But that doesn't stop there. The state of California also has in place the EDD, which they call the FED-ED, F-E-D hyphen E-D, which is the federal state extension duration benefits. Now this could be, if you're not in California, this could be available in your state as well because it became available 
when a state experiences high or prolonged periods of unemployment, which because of COVID, everybody pretty much is doing that. Okay, so if it's not, if you don't live in California, check with your unemployment office for this program. But California calls it the Fed ED. And what it does is it gives you an additional 20 weeks of unemployment. So you got the 39 weeks plus the 20 weeks. That's 59 weeks of benefit that is available to you if you need it. Now, once you, of course, complete the 39 weeks um, of unemployment, which is the uh, 26 weeks plus the 13 weeks, they, California will send you a notice in the mail to make sure to see if you qualify for it. This benefit is available until the end of the year, which is really nice. Now, some of you may be receiving the $600 extra money that came through the CARE Act um, on benefits. That does end on July 31st. There is nothing that's been notified that is going to be extended at this time. So if you are receiving unemployment and you're receiving that extra $600, that will stop as of July 31st, just to let you know. Now, what about those business owners, you know, self-employed, independent contractors? What about us? We need some unemployment, don't we? I mean, a lot of times they didn't really pay unemployment for business owners, self-employed and independent contractors that suddenly found themselves having to close shop. And that's been very, very hard for a lot of people. Well, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or the PUA, um, did go into effect. And that's into effect um, until the end of the year. You get 39 weeks of, assist of assistance. So if you are a business owner, self-employed, independent contractor, get down there and apply for unemployment. If you have your shop closed, go get yourself some unemployment. You can receive up to 39 weeks of unemployment. And fresh off the press, I'm excited about this. The state of California just on the 2nd of July opened up an extra amount of weeks for people that live in California. So you, if you live in California, you get seven extra weeks if you are a business owner, self-employed, or independent contractor on the PUA, on the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. So you are actually going to receive a total of 46 weeks if you need assistance. Now also, if you are staying home because you are taking care of someone that is sick, or if you have to stay home because you've been um, quarantined because you had to take the, the COVID test and you're waiting for results, um, or sadly, if you have it yourself, and if you do, I'm praying for you. Um, but if you, did have, if you do have to stay home because of COVID for any particular reason, um, you are also available for the paid family leave. So definitely want to apply for that through the unemployment office. Now, the paid family leave is a six-week program, so six weeks anytime throughout the year. So you can scatter two days here, three, three weeks there, whatever. But you get a total of six weeks of um, paid family leave in that 60 to 70% of your income. Um, and so you can apply for that. Um, and also, if you've had a baby, a good thing, right, a, a joyful thing, had a baby, you can also, of course, apply for the paid family leave for that, too. And it doesn't have to be a COVID reason for taking care of a family member. If, they're, if you're taking care of them because they have, like, uh, dementia or, or Alzheimer's or something of that nature, um, if your family member is ill and you need to take time to help take care of them, you can, of course, apply for the paid family leave. It's, it's for six weeks. But guess what? Fresh off the press. July 2nd, the state of California, if you're in California, they extended that to eight weeks. So you now get eight weeks, just to let you know. Now, you can find out more information at that site that I have on here, edd.ca.gov, slash about, underscore edd, slash coronavirus, hyphen 2019.htm. Uh, so take a picture of that. Again, I'll send you the information um, it's about two hours after the presentation. Also, if you are unemployed, um, you'll see that www.edd.ca.gov uh, slash unemployment slash filing underscore a underscore claim dot htm. That's where you want to go to apply. Best to do it that way than call them because if you call them, you're going to be on the phone forever. So just go there and fill out the application there. And again, 
even for one day, you're furloughed, whatever, one day you can apply for unemployment. But guess what? If you are receiving unemployment, um, the really good news is you can earn up to 30% of your weekly benefit amount before benefits start to be reduced. Now, many people want to take advantage of opportunities such as babysitting or odd jobs to earn a little bit of extra money while they're not working their regular job, and it's fine. As long as you remember, you do have to report all work and all earnings um, while filing for benefits. It doesn't matter if the money is being earned in another state, if it's temporary, if it's part-time, if you mowed your next-door neighbor's lawn and you got $15 for it, whatever it is, cash under the table, tips, whatever, you need to report it. All work and all wages must be reported regardless of the amount. But again, you can earn up to 30% of your weekly benefits before, any, before you start losing any of your unemployment. So what are some ways to earn money? Well, yeah, you can go to the unemployment office. Call them. They may need somebody who can be out there to help put up a retainer wall or somebody to hold a stop sign while they're fixing the street. There's so many different opportunities that you can do as an extra uh, a job uh, just by contacting the unemployment office and see if there's anything out there that will fit in what you do. Um, also, if you're retired, yeah, you also can make a little bit of money and still get your retirement. So, yeah, you can still contact the unemployment office as well. Also, there's job fairs. Uh, yeah, I said job fairs. Um, job fairs are still going on, but they're virtual. So they don't want you to have to come down, dress up, and come down. You still should dress up because you'll need your computer and you'll need to be able to see your face. But they are still doing job fairs. Uh, you just can Google it. Just make sure it's a reputable site when you go. Um, in San Diego area, for instance, they're having a job fair on September 2nd virtually. And in the Los Angeles area, they're having one on October 22nd virtually, which is really good. So if you want, you can go to a job fair if you're unemployed. Um, also, um, there are 65 different places where you can sell anything you want online. I have a neighbor who's making masks, and they're really cute, and she's selling them online, and she's doing really good with it. Uh, so you can pretty much sell anything you want. Walk around your house. See what things you don't need anymore. You can. There's a lot of easy ways of selling them online and tutoring, so you can get tutored how to do it. I mean, there's places like Amazon, Bonanza, eBay. Wix, Shopify, Nextdoor, Declutter, Let Go, and places like Nextdoor and Let Go, they're local, so you'll be e so you can sell it to somebody close by, so you won't have to ship it to Timbuktu someplace. Um, but there are all kinds of places you can go. Just make sure that they're reputable places when you go to them, and you can also work part time. Um, you can work for a food delivery company. Um, they're definitely wanting people like crazy right now because there's so many people doing food delivery right now. Or places like Instacart to go shopping for people. Um, definitely wear your mask. That's my point of view. Um, well, if you do that. Um, and it's a way of making extra cash. And the other thing is, is that you can work for like UPS, FedEx, all those different types of companies. Um, they are screaming for people to work part-time or temporary. Um, so definitely get online and see what you can find out there for those organizations. And they also have places where you can make surveys online and make money if you want to stay home and not go out. Uh, definitely look at the survey companies. They have a lot of online stay-at-home um, organizations. I do want to give a disclaimer that Balance and LAPFCU does not recommend any of these sites. So we want you to do your due diligence to check if it is a good fit for you to sell or work for these organizations. And lastly, of course, you can advertise to maybe dog walk, gardening in your neighborhood. I have this one elderly gentleman who's retired, and he does about seven of the houses right here in my little neighborhood. He actually mows their front lawn. He only does the front lawn, but it keeps him active. It keeps him healthy, and he loves to talk, I'll tell you. And he's like 84 years old, and he's out there, and all he does is mow. That's it. 
So for $15, he will mow your front lawn for you. And it's such a blessing to have him here, I'll tell you. So he just mows lawns for $15 on the front lawn only. Uh, oh, and I have another neighbor who walks dogs. And he actually makes fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred, not thousand would be great, fifteen hundred dollars a month walking dogs. He charges thirty five dollars a, a walk, and he's got himself up to fifteen hundred dollars a month walking the neighbor's dogs. So uh, definitely something that you can look into and advertise for. Um, you can go to next door. You can just send out, you know go to your neighbor's front porches and put a little thing on their front porch if you want to. Uh, so whatever it is, um, it's, it's really some way, a way of really making a little bit of extra cash. I'm going to talk a little bit about debt repayment real quickly. Um, I'm not really going to go too much into it. I do want to let you know to make sure you contact your commu uh, communicate with your um, creditors. Uh, that is extremely important to do. Um, I do want to also let you know that if you make a payment arrangement with your creditors uh, to, for a workout option, a deferment, a forbearance, or a partial payment, um, when it comes to credit reporting, 120 days after um, the national emergency ends, they will not report a derogatory on your credit. But you have to have a payment arrangement made with your creditor. Uh, that's through the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is the CFP, uh, CFPB. Uh, so definitely a really great thing, but you have to have an arrangement made and you have to keep that arrangement in order for it not to affect you. Uh, the other thing that you really want to remember is that if you go to annualcreditreport.com, that's annualcreditreport.com, you can get a copy of your credit report on a weekly basis through April 2021 for free. So every week you can go on there and get a copy of all three of your credit reports for free. I want to let you know that. And then also on the mortgage payments, definitely contact your mortgage company. That is so important to do. Um, they do have a moratorium on um, on foreclosures at this particular time or um, and then a lot of states now and California is one of them um, has a moratorium on people that rent from being evicted so they cannot do foreclosures or evict right now um, for foreclosures uh, but you do want to check your county as well um, but for foreclosures they're not doing any foreclosures on properties right now uh, so definitely want to take a look at that um, it's been extended. It was on June 30th that that moratorium ended, but it's been extended until August 31st. So that gives you time, and this is for federal funded mortgages, which would be like Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, things of that nature. So if you have a federally funded mortgage, you cannot be foreclosed on until after August 31st. Great time to contact your creditor. And Fannie Mae, by the way, if you have a Fannie Mae mortgage, they are doing a forbearance to put those payments at the end, but you have to call. So definitely contact your mortgage servicer to see what they can do for you. Very important to do that. And then, of course, student loans. We all know that student loans are a big thing, and if you have a federal-funded student loan, you don't have to worry about paying, that, paying anything to them until after September 30th of this year. So they they did what's called a forbearance on it. So they're putting those payments to the end automatically. So there's no payments due if it's federally, like Jenny, uh, Jenny May, any of those. So if it's federal funded student loan, they're frozen until, and there's no interest either. So they're not adding interest to it. They're not doing anything. So there's no payments, no interest, no nothing until October 1st of 2020. So until September 30, 20th, so if you have a student loan, sit back, relax, and breathe, okay? Now I'm going to talk a little bit about utilities. Again, definitely call the utility companies if you're having any financial difficulty. Um, so if you're having any difficulty with your utilities, um, the good news is, is that they cannot shut you off. So there is no shut off on your utilities um, in California 
until after April 16th of 21. So if it's water, if it's garbage, if it's uh, electricity, they cannot turn off your, your electricity, your water. Everything's going to flow. Everything's going to be picked up. But once that date hits of April 16th, 2021, if you're a delinquent, they're going to come after you. So definitely give them a call to make arrangements. But if you are having some financial difficulty of any type, shape, or form, um, contact your utility company because there is a thing called the CARE program. And the CARE program was put into place to help people that are having any financial difficulties. They look at what your income is, whether it be retirement income, whether it be that you have a job loss, you only get unemployment, whatever it happens to be, they will look at what's coming in and they will actually help you pay a portion of your utilities for you. Um, I do have that uh, link right there on number four. But you can also contact your utility company and talk to them about the CARE program. Uh, so just mention the CARE program to them, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. And if you go to their web page, I'm sure there's a link for that, because I know there is on, on, on most of them. But also with electricity, um, when it comes to electricity, if you have Southern California Edison, San Diego Gas, electric company, and or, well, or Pacific Gas and Electric, there's another program that they have in place called FARA. It's the Family Electric Rate Assistance Program. And what they do is they will give, um, if, you, if your income's lowered, they will give you, if, on an emergency, they will give you assistance in the electric usage to a lower rate. So they will lower your rate so that way you can hopefully afford that electricity. So definitely, if you're having any reduced income, contact your electric company, if it is Southern California Edison, San Diego Gas and Electric, or Pacific Gas and Electric. Give them a call. Talk to them. Go online. There's a form for that. There's usually under assistance, or if there, there's a little uh, app for that where there's if you look at their, their page or you just hit the COVID because they have, we can help in COVID. Just click that COVID button and they'll, they'll be right there for you. Um, you can always go to www.cpuc.ca.gov if you're in California slash COVID slash to find out all the utility assistance programs that are available for you. And lastly, for me anyway, is protecting yourself. It is so important to protect yourself. There are a lot of scammers out there right now, a lot of people that want your money, whether you are retired, whether you are um, unemployed, whether, if you're looking for work, all kinds of scammers out there. So the FC, FTC did want you to know that there is a scam with them, with the FTC. Uh, the FTC, there's people that are calling people and sending them emails that are saying that, hey, you guys get extra cash um, from the government um, and it's because the money's been sitting in this global empowerment fund and we want to get that money to you. And then they ask you for your checking account so they can transfer that money to you or your credit card number so they can get that money to you. It's a fraud. The FTC does not make phone calls and does not send emails. So if you get a phone call or an email saying they're from the FTC and you've got money waiting, do not believe them. It is a scam. Do not give them your information. Um, also, there is a cyber currency scam going on, as we, you may have heard in the news. A week ago, some high-profile people had their Twitter account hacked by scammers who sent out fake tweets to them asking followers to send money using Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is digital money, digital currency, for those of you that may not know, but it is real money, okay? It does equal out to real money, okay? So it's a, it's, it's, it's a type of cybo currency or digital money scam. Now, cybo uh, currency scams are, they're popping up everywhere. It's not just those rich and famous that are getting this. It's everywhere. Uh, there's a lot of, um, most common ones are, doing online chains, so you might get something on Facebook or Twitter or um, Instagram, and you think, oh, this sounds really cool, right? 
Um, there's also referral bogus scams, investment scams, business opportunity scams. Now, what they all have in common so that you know that this is a scam is they always tell you that you have to um, send them money or make a payment using Bitcoin or another type of cybo currency. So if it sounds too good to be true, hang up the phone, delete the email. Pass that Facebook um, uh, notification or that Instagram notification. Don't fall into that scam. And another scammer is, of course, for those that are looking for jobs because jobs are tough. So to trick people, people are actually going to the honest work sites and they're posting jobs and saying, hey, we're real. And unfortunately, those honest work people, uh, work sites, are trying to keep up with them, but they can't. So they don't know if it's for true or not. So make sure if you are looking for a job that it is a reputable company that you are doing applying for. It's something you know that is reputable. And if they ever say to you, you know what, you are going to be in the running, but we need you to send us some money or we need your checking account information first, you know it could be a scam. It's likely a scam. Again, if it sounds too good to be true and if you're paying out money from your pocket, it's likely a scam. So just be really, really careful um, to make sure that you're not falling into these uh, scammers because I'm telling you they are out there and they really want to take your money and they want to take your identity. And that's why it's always important to look at annualcreditreport.com just to make sure that nobody's gotten in there. There's no new accounts on there. Uh, so be careful there. Um, and then quickly, I do want to touch base on the fact that savings, and I mentioned this a little earlier, um, always put 10% of whatever you make, whether it be minimum wage, whether it be $4 million a, a month, put 10% of whatever you're bringing in into a savings account. And again, you want to have a periodic savings account. You want to have a furlough savings account or emergency savings account. And you want to have your basic savings account. And importantly, you want your retirement savings account all equaling up to 10% minimum of what you have. Okay, so definitely want to think about savings and talk to LAPFCU because they will be more than happy to help figure out how much savings and how to transfer that money. It could go into your checking account with your payroll and automatically transfer. And that's a good, a good strategy is say, I'm going to put $25 every, every paycheck into my savings account with an automatic transfer. It's going to transfer out before I even see it. And if you don't see it, you don't know it's there, right? So get the automatic transfer. It's a really good step to have. Now, LAPFCU is there to help you with a whole bunch of things. So if you need any assistance, if you're hurting at all, if you're fighting with whatever's happening to you, definitely contact them. And they also partner with Balance to provide additional financial resources, such as one-on-one -on -one counseling and coaching. So if you want to look at your individual situation, you can talk to a certified counselor for free at 888-456-2227. Also, you can go to lapfcu.balancepro.org to get a whole bunch of great resources that you can utilize. Next, I'd like to bring Natalie back on. Natalie, are you there? Natalie, are you there? Natalie, are you there? Let's unmute you. Natalie, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How is everyone doing tonight? Thank you for joining us. Um, I will be sharing some exciting news um, that we recently uh, launched a incentive program. We increased our dollar amounts. We have some more money to give back to our members. And basically, uh, what we wanted to do is we here's another way that you guys um, can give your fellow members um, the gift of membership and a little way that you guys can make some extra money. Um, you know, you'll be helping us grow. And while LAPFCU grows, we get stronger. We can bring you guys uh, better rates, better services, and more webinars like this. So how it works is you can earn up to $500 for every member that you refer to LAPFCU. 
and that opens an account, you get a hundred dollars and they get two fifty. So woohoo, that's a lot of money, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what they must do um, in order for both parties to get the funds is uh, the new member must open a savings account and a checking account at LAPFCU. We got three different types of checking accounts to choose from, one to suit every type of need, and they're hundred percent free, no fees on those. They must set up a monthly minimum of a $250 ACH, which is a transfer from another institution or direct deposit out of payroll. Uh, another requirement is to set up e-statements and e-disclosures, which is a one and done deal. So once you set it up, you don't have to worry about it moving forward and also register for the uh, incentive at LAPFCU forward slash refer. Now the incentives will be mailed out to you in the form of a gift card within four to six weeks of the new person that's joining completing the requirements. And right now this is going for a limited time only because we've had our existing referral program in place, but the dollar amounts recently increased on July 1st. But here's another way for us to give back to our field of membership by incentivizing them to uh, encourage their loved ones to join. And so I just wanna highlight to everyone that um, it is going on for a limited time only. So um, don't delay, start referring today. For more information, you can visit our website or drop a question in the inbox and we'll be sure to give you more guidance on how to get more information on the program. So thank you very much for your time and I'll turn it back to Colleen. Thank you. That is great news. You know, anytime you can get free cash, I jump on that. I will always jump on free cash. So that is like a great thing to do, definitely. So now I'm going to open up for questions. So if you want, if you have any questions from anything that I talked, I know it was a lot of stuff. And again, I'm going to be sending you this recording about two hours after the session. So you can kind of freeze frame things and re-listen to the websites that I'm talking about and the, and the numbers that I'm talking about or the dates rather I'm talking about. But if you do have any questions, again, I have Tim on the phone as well um, to answer any questions about LAPFCU and the programs that they have. So if any of you have questions, please type, type away in the, in the, in the question box. Um, who exactly is eligible for the referral? So Natalie, who's eligible for the referrals? That's a great question. Um, immediate family members. So we have on our website, we can outline, we have a list. Um, so just to give you um, a glimpse of it, it's children, spouses, parents. Um, that's the immediate uh, network that's eligible for membership. Then from there, um, those people can then sponsor others that are um, related to them from there. Or co-workers. So any co-workers within the field of membership as well. And they must be over 18. 18 and above. That's a great question. Thank you very much, Grad, for that. Anybody else have any questions at all? Okay. Oh, I did. I did. Since I've got a couple minutes left, I did want to mention to you about the retirement plans um, for COVID-19. Uh, because of COVID-19, penalties for early withdrawal are being waived. I don't want you to attack your, your retirement accounts right now, though, okay? Um, loan amounts, of course, could be higher than they previously were. Um, so you can actually get higher loan potentials. Um, and requirements um, uh, for the RDM rule, again, is being suspended. So definitely if you are putting money in for RMD or if you are wanting to take a withdrawal, the penalties are being waived. Uh, that is going through um, until uh, 1231 of, of this year, by, so the end of the year. Um, so definitely if you absolutely need money, you can get money, but please be careful and don't attack your retirement unless it's an absolute last choice option, um, okay? So I did want to mention that to you. So this webinar is a presentation for the commitment of financial empowerment from LAPFCU and presented here by Balance. My name again is Colleen Garrity. If you are not a member, then you want to join LAPFCU because they are great. They are wonderful. Uh, you can go to LAPFCU.org slash about slash benefits hyphen and an availability. So basically go to LAPFCU.org, click the about button, and then click the benefits and eligibility button. Um, 
similar to what Natalie just mentioned a little bit ago. And you can see if you can join LAPFCU because they are an absolutely wonderful organization. So I do want to thank you guys very much for attending. Um, you can definitely reach out to us. Balance, again, is a financial education and counseling services. Uh, the services are free to you as a member of LAPFCU. So if you need help with counseling, um, any questions you have financially, definitely you can contact us because um, we are here for you for money management, debt repayment, credit report review, housing, anything. Uh, you can definitely reach out to us because we are here. Um, again, our phone number is 888-456-2227. And, of course, you can reach out to LAPFCU at 877-695-2732. And, Tim and Natalie, I want to thank you so much for being on here with me. I appreciate you guys so much. And I definitely want to thank all of you for attending. And I really hope you all have a great and glorious day. I thank you.